Hey, shalom, brothers and sisters. I welcome you back. Thank you again for joining me today. And today I want to do a, I'll do a book review. And uh, this is a, this is this is a subject I haven't uh, touched up on yet. And I'm going to present this book to you. And then I'm going to do just a little lesson on on this issue. And it's uh, the doctrine of the immortality of the soul. And uh, anyways, uh, this book is. Uh, called Immortality or Resurrection, a Biblical Study on uh, Human Nature and Destiny. And uh, Dr. Sam uh, Bakiochia, uh, he's, uh, he's the author of this book, and uh, it's, it's a well-informed book. Uh, here's the front, and uh, here's the back right here. This is a, this is a, you know, full of information and everything. Uh, the book is like 304 pages. On the back's got like footnotes. Uh, let's see. And this book was uh, published. Uh, uh, second printing was 1998. Uh, Biblical perspectives. Uh, let's see, 40. 4990 Apian Way, Marion Springs, Michigan. That's where, uh, see, he's, he, he passed away back in, I think it was 2008, I believe. But he has several books. And, uh, in fact, I did one, another book review on him many months back. It's called, uh, uh, From Sabbath to Sunday. And you can look that video up. That's a good book. Great. This greatly, uh, researched and stuff. But, uh, yeah, this book here, he's uh he gets into the immortality of soul, which uh is basically all began with uh pagan Greeks, the Greeks, you know, they believed in the immortality of the soul. You you know, there's things about when you pass away, the soul goes back up to heaven or whatever. Uh there's other things where the body is bad and the soul is good. The body is the prison of the soul. It's a prison, and once you pass away, the soul is released and, you know, does whatever, goes around, does whatever. But uh, I'm going to read some, I'm going to read some uh, uh, things for you here. I'm going to go to page 48, and it says, uh, uh, soul and blood. Uh, I'm just going to read, read a little, give you a little glimpse on what the book's about here. Hey, page 48. <laughs> uh, life is a translation, life, the new word life is a translation of the Hebrew Nefesh, so the passage reads, the soul of the flesh is in the blood. In verse 14 of uh, uh, what Genesis or Leviticus uh, 17, this was 17 uh, verse four, 14, uh, we read, for the life of every creature is, is the blood of it. Therefore I have said to the people of Israel, you shall not eat the blood of any creature, for the life of every creature is is its blood. Uh, and it says here is the word life is used in each instance to translate the Hebrew nefesh. So the passage should actually read, for the soul of every creature is in the blood of it, for the soul of every creature is uh, its blood. Uh, the phrase each creature suggests that the reference to blood both apply to both man and animals, and thus, uh, thus as uh, Attic Atkinson's, Atkinson's points out, we have here a most important insight revealed in the essence of human nature. Soul and blood are identical. Uh, I continue on uh, 40, page 49 here. The Hebrew were forbidden to eat meat still containing blood because the act meddled with uh, nefesh, which means life, and uh, therefore became offensive to Yahweh. The equation between blood and nefesh meant consuming blood was a form of murder. One was uh, sustaining one's own life, nefesh, with uh, sacred nefesh, life of another. So, uh, and then I'm going to jump over to page one. Uh, 168. I'm going to read just a couple couple lines here for you here, and uh, it says here the reason the death penalty was in, inflicted for consulting with some familiar spirits. It uh, is that because uh, evil spirits or fallen angels impersonating the dead 
Such a practice would eventually lead the people to worship the devil rather than Yahweh. That's why it's forbidden to talk to familiar spirits, mediums, and oh, you know whatever the such. But uh, going down here, they're talking about uh, was it Samuel? Samuel here says, uh, "I see, I see an Elohim coming out of the earth." That's First Samuel twenty-eight thirteen. The plural word Elohim is used in the Bible not only for the true. Uh, Elohim, you know, Yahweh, but also for false ones. And you can find that in Genesis 35, uh, verse 2, Exodus 12, 12, and uh, Exodus 20, uh, was it 3? What the medium saw was a false Elohim, or spear, evil spirit, impersonating Samuel. So it wasn't Samuel, it was it was an imposter, it was an evil spirit impersonating him. And I'm going to go down one more time here. Furthermore, if Samuel had been in heaven, the spirit impersonator of Samuel would have said, Why have you brought me down? But he said, Why have you disturbed me to bring me up? I mean, if you catch my drift on what that means. Uh, but anyways, if there was an immortality of the soul where all the souls return to Yahweh, then what's the point in the resurrection? Why would Yeshua and the host of angels come down when we're all up there anyways? You know, it's, but anyways, uh, yeah, I want to, I want to sit there and stress right here. Let's see, got to get my big strong concordance out here, like, because uh, when it comes to the Old Testament, you know, the, when it talks about the soul, basically, I don't have a soul, you don't have a soul, you are a soul, I am a soul. That's, and you go to 5315. Uh, 5315 here and Strong's it says Nefesh and uh, a breathing creature an animal uh, vitality used very widely uh, accommodated figure sense bodily or meant uh, uh, any appetite beast body breath creature dead desire Commented, uh, fish, ghost, greedy, but it goes on, it goes on down here. But, uh, for the Old Testament, you know, that's 5315. Then when Yeshua talks about it, and I'm going to get to that here in a minute, it's, uh, number 4151. And, uh, no, that's, uh, I mean, uh, 5390, sorry, 5390. Uh, let's see where that go. Fifty three ninety, and it says right here, it's like a, a psych. It's called psych, and it's from breath, spirit, uh, animal, sentiment, principle only. Thus, distinguish on the one hand, which is a rational and a moral soul, uh, not a mortal soul, immoral soul. On the other hand, uh, basically, it's like life mind and soul that's that's what it means right there so you got those two right there uh that clears the way of what the soul soul is and now when they talk about they talk about immortality of the soul they sit there basically saying the soul can never die it can never perish never be destroyed nothing now does your bible say that well fortunately no it don't so we got to go back to the beginning of Genesis right here. I'm going to go to Genesis. Uh, Genesis, I'm going to start with chapter 2. Uh, chapter 2, and uh, it was a verse 7. And right here it says, And Yahweh, Elohim, formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living soul. So, like we said before, you know, life and soul are, basic, are basically synonymous. They're like intertwined together. So he became a living soul. And uh, I, I skip over to uh, chapter 3 and uh, verse 2 to 5. This is when uh, the first lie, this is the first recorded lie. It's when uh, the serpent tempted Eve. And here's what here's what's said. 
Starting with verse, uh, was it, verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in, of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which in, is in the midst of the garden, Elohim said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For Elohim uh, doth know that in the day you eat thereof, uh, your eyes will, shall be opened, and you shall be as mighty ones, knowing good from evil. So this is the first lie, and it's about basically uh, the devil is saying, uh, you know, you, you know, going to have immortality. You're going to be like, you're going to be like a mighty one. You know, you're going to be like him and others. You're going to be like, this, you know, the devil. You're going to be like the devil too. You're going to know good from evil. You're going to never going to never going to die. But that ain't true because uh, I could go to uh, let's go to Psalms. Let's see, jump to Psalms and it'd be uh, verse forty right here. Four, 40, uh, yeah, verse forty and uh, or chapter forty, verse uh, fourteen, and it says right here, "Let them be ashamed and confounded together." that seek after my soul to destroy. It, uh, it let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. So there, somebody's coming after after the soul to destroy it. Now, if you could never destroy a soul, there'd be no, part in, no point in trying to destroy it if it wasn't possible. So yeah, uh, now we're going to go, I'm going to go to uh, <coughs> the New Testament Mark. Excuse me. Uh, New Testament Mark here, and let's see what he says. What verse is that? Um, eight or chapter eight? Uh, yeah, Mark chapter eight, and a verse uh, the thirty-six and thirty-seven. Thirty-six and thirty-seven. This is a uh, Yeshua's own words. Thirty-six and thirty-seven. He's, you know, talking, he's explaining another lesson here. And starting with 30, uh, verse 36 of chapter 8. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So what is a profit? What's a profit if, you know, you're selling your, your soul, your life? You're selling your life. You're selling your soul for whatever, greed, uh sexual gratification whatever you know but uh yeah that's what yeshua said right there and then i'm gonna go back to matthew because you know yeshua he uh basically sums it up pretty well here uh let's see chapter 10 almost there but uh and that's going to be uh chapter matthew chapter 10 verse uh 20 to 28 yeah, 28. And he says right here, And fear not that which kill the body, but are not able to kill to kill the soul. But rather, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in Jehina, Jehina fire. And that's what Yeshua said right there. So immortality of the soul is a, it's a Greek concept, you know, a Greek concept thought and idea back then with the philosophers trying to debate on the nature of man and you're talking about different you know mighty ones gods whatever you want to call them and and i just i never touched up on it till now when i did this book review this dr sam's book review i decided to put some of that little lesson in on this and uh yeah i don't you know there ain't no point and there ain't no point and believe in it i you know crept into the church slowly through the centuries it crept into the church and finally gained some steam and you know first it got its foot in the door and then it wiggled its way into through the narrow crack a lot of people they don't study it they don't you know they don't study the topic they don't see if it's in the bible or not in the bible and that's the importance you need to you need to know that you need to study your your scriptures to prove you know prove yourself right or wrong and that's just a problem we, uh, the dilemma we face today. Not enough, 
time to study the scriptures because of work or workload or or just technology and you know like being on the phone all the time clicking away looking staring at the screen but but anyways that's enough for me right now and i hope you do get that book and also i thank you again for joining me and uh you also uh please give me a big thumbs up and hit that notification bell and also i appreciate if you subscribe and I thank you again. Until we meet again, peace out and shalom.